welcome in. So here's the last uh, little quiz or test okay, on electromagnetic induction for foundational physics. So you can certainly download it as I normally post it up. So in the description below, you'll find it. You can solve and go through it. All right, so let's jump in. I'll try to, if we have any calculations, I'll try to keep them to three significant figures if we really need to. And I'll try not to round in intermediate steps for us. All right, so let's jump in in the first set, which is going to be the multiple choice uh, set of questions that we have in here. So question number one, the law of electromagnetic induction discusses, so how electrons induce a magnetic field. Uh, no, so how electrons uh, induce an electric field. Okay, so no, how a changing magnetic field induces a resistance. No, no resistance. Uh, how a changing magnetic field induces an electric charge. Uh, no. Okay, so it's not on the above. So it does have to do with a changing magnetic field uh, with regards to uh, induce, uh, induce an actual current, right, which is going to be flowing. So here, uh, so the first one, it's going to be actually none of the above. Okay, that seems like the best one. So number two, so induction is closely tied to which transfer of energy. And so that would be, so conduction. Uh, conduction is actually, you know, physical contact with regards to heat transfer. Convection is also heat transfer um, uh, with regards to kind of uh, fluids in general. So as they're flowing around and then radiation actually uh, radiation, although most of the time when you discuss these, I'm going to put up a link up above to those three if you like. If you're discussing these, they are to do mostly with heat transfer, but radiation actually has to do uh, through the transfer uh, through electromagnetic waves. And induction, so at least the induction that you talk about, electromagnetic induction in this, uh, also utilizes. So if you're thinking about the magnetic field, it has to do actually with electromagnetic waves as well. So um, the closest one, it's not exactly, but it is the closest one. So I'm going to put actually here radiation, which is a pretty close one that ties in into induction because of the transfer. So magnetic fields okay, and the transfer through electromagnetic waves. Now, number three, which is using Lenz's law, if the magnet in the figure below is moved to the left, so that would be this one. So if we're moving it to the left, then in which direction would the current flow? Conventional current that is, okay, in the highlighted portion. All right, so if you are doing this, so by Lenz's law, so what we know, if you move this to the left, then you're actually going to be reducing, notice the south pole, right? So as you have, so the magnetic field, so it's coming in, in there so this is going to be you know as it comes in okay in that direction but if you're moving this away then the magnitudes are actually going to be reducing right so it's going to be getting smaller in the magnetic um, field with regards to that south pole so by Lenz's law we know that the current is going to flow in such a direction that it tries to actually oppose that change so if it's going to oppose that change, so now if you thought that you would have a south pole in here, then this actually south pole and south pole would repel each other, right? So in that case, it would actually help to move this away. Um, so we actually need a north pole, north pole to try to reduce this. So you actually would have to do you know a bit of work to try to move this away. But if you're going to have a north pole over here, and then you can use your right hand rule. Uh, within here and you'll notice that the current okay, is going to have to flow in this direction uh, on these so this means it's upwards okay in order to have that north pole there so let's see in these multiple choice so the current would not flow at all it would flow upwards yes actually it would flow upwards okay so that's what we would have not downwards uh, would oscillate back and forth uh, no I mean it just says moving to the left so none of the above. Okay, so the one flowing upwards is the best one. Number four, identify a true statement for alternating current versus direct current. Okay, so DC uh, allows for easier transmission of power over long distances. This is actually not true. So this is one of the reasons why we try not to use DC uh, within here because you have power losses. 
um, as you're going through. And also you can't really use DC in transformers. So for part B, DC allows for step up and step down of voltages across transformers. That's also not true actually. Um, uh, C, uh, AC allows for having non-changing currents. So non-changing, well, AC means alternating currents. Okay, so it definitely is changing. So it won't be C. D, AC allows for step up and step down of voltages across transformers. Yes, this is definitely true. This is one of the power that AC transformers allows. Why? Because if you do have a changing current um, that is going through a transformer, so as it goes through those coils, then basically it's creating a, a changing magnetic field. And that changing magnetic field is gonna induce uh, a current to flow on the uh, other side. So typically the secondary side on that transformer. So this would be D. Number five, electricity generation can be accomplished by having a constant magnetic field. We actually need a changing magnetic field, okay? So within here, so um, it won't be A, a B having a constant electric field that has nothing to do with the electric field. Um, C having a changing magnetic field, well, there you go. So that's what we do need, okay? In order to induce uh, electricity to go through. Um, so that is a, a good one in terms of our choice. Number six, the key principle behind ideal transformers, so there's no power losses, no energy losses, so energy is conserved. Uh, so there you go, okay? So A, power on the primary is equal to the power on the secondary. That is true. So that's the main idea behind ideal transformers, that you do have no power losses. Uh, voltage on the primary is equal to the voltage on the secondary, um, so that's not true, I mean, unless you know the windings are one-to-one. -one. Uh, for C, so current on the primary is equal to the current on the secondary. Uh, so again, so that's not necessary. That's not always true. Uh, so they would have to be equal in terms of the number of windings. Uh, number of windings on the primary is equal. Okay, so no. Okay, so um, A looks like the best choice out of here. And now for number seven, if the number of windings on the primary side of a transformer is larger than on the secondary, all right, so let's do that. Now, if you, you know, so what this is saying is the NP is larger than the NS, so let's make it simple, let's say two, okay, is greater than one. Not that we have that ratio, but you know, you can do that if you throw in those numbers, it makes sometimes cal um, answering the question easier. So I'll just keep two and one, just means primary is bigger. So then, you know, what must be true? Well, we do know that NP over NS, uh, so it is equal to, so the current on the secondary is higher than on the primary. All right, so within here, so if you recall, so this is uh, inversely proportional, so it's gonna be IS over IP, um, actually. And so, you know, if you do stick in that two and a one in there, I'm not saying that that's what it is, but sometimes that's convenient to use. So you will notice that indeed, okay, your secondary, your current is going to be higher than your primary. And that is because there's an inverse uh, proportionality. So it is actually the voltages that are proportional, right? So the voltage will be higher um, uh, on the primary and then lower on the secondary just because of the, the way that the windings are set up. But the currents will actually be higher. So this one is true. Now let's see if the other ones, the voltage on the secondary is high. No, that's not true. The power, no. Power is always the same, at least for ideal transformers. So all of the above are true, no. None of the above, no. So A actually works in here. All right, so that is multiple choice for us. Here's the first question that is non-multiple choice. Uh, describe how AC electricity can be generated. And then draw diagrams to help you capture um, how, current gets how current gets induced, what the direction current is flowing and why it changes directions. It changes directions, the magnetic fields, okay, will be changing. Um, and then where does the energy transfer come from to induce current flow? All right, so these are really good questions and I've actually done an entire video on this exact question. <laughs> All right, so I'm not gonna repeat myself in here. I'm gonna put up a link up above there. Please check it out um, if you wanna see. And it has visuals so that you can answer these three parts. The second question, in your own words, describe Lenz's law. Provide one example to illustrate your description. 
So hint, you know, Lenz's law captures the direction of current. So again, you know, Lenz's law, I've actually <laughs> captured this um, in a video as well. So um, for yourself, if you're just checking, you know, this is a really good um, kind of example in terms of trying to write out in your own words. So instead of just kind of listening, be like, oh yeah, that's what it is. Try to write it out and then compare it to the video solution that I'm gonna put up upstairs there, all right, for you. Here is question number three. So imagine the average current value of 650 amps passes along a transmission line from a power generator to the city, okay? So a transmission line carries about, so we have a resistance. All right, let me just start writing these out for myself. Okay, so we have a, a given, so there is a, a resistance of 0 0.00035. So the resistance isn't very big, okay, as you have on these transmission lines. However, um, it does, it can get big, okay, if you're traveling huge amounts of distances. So this says that it's only 0 0.00035, which is small, but that's per 100 meters, right, within here. If the current needs to travel, so notice that the distance of travel is 250 um, kilometers. So you know, if you change this back into meters to make it consistent, you know, so that's quite a lot, 250,000 meters um, that we have in here. Um, then what power would be lost during the transmission? All right, well, power is equal to voltage times current um, for us. Now within here, we don't really know, um, you know, in terms of what the voltage uh, is, although I guess we, we can get it. Oh, no, they do give us the voltage at the end there. So let me just read it all the way through. Um, so the, in terms of power, and then it says, where do you think most of this energy power goes that is transfers into? So it has to transfer somewhere, right? Um, assume that the average voltage, okay, so within here, and it says 230 kilovolts. Now, we don't really need this, to be honest with you, because if you use Ohm's law, so now recall that Ohm's law is equal to V is equal to I times R. So we could have, because we have I, right, we're gonna need to find out resistance. So this will do that shortly. Now that's gonna be the entire resistance, right? So the total resistance over the whole distance traveled. Um, and we could have just simply substituted that back in here. And in fact, you know, if you would substitute in, you would get I R times I, which is equal to I squared R, which you may see this formula, you know? So if you have the current and you have the resistance, then you can find out what the power is, in this case, in terms of the losses. All right, so let's do this. So I'm gonna take this information. So let's find out what that resistance will be. Um, so within here, okay, so as you're going along, okay, so we will have uh, 0 0.00035, all right, so this is what we're gonna have all over, okay, and that will be, okay, within, um, and this is for every 100 meters, okay, so times 250123 meters, okay, so I'm just gonna cancel that off, so let's see how big that resistance will be, all right, um, so within, so that's 0 0.00035 and then multiply by 2500 equals, okay, so that will be 0 0.875 ohms, so not very big, okay, for this particular distance that we have. And we said we could calculate what the power is because we know what the voltage, but of course we wanna be able to see actually what the losses are. So, you know, within the losses, okay, well, we're gonna be comparing this back in uh, momentarily. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that, all right? So I'm gonna calculate this, okay, um, with the current given, and then let's calculate this as well, which would have been, you know, the whole power, okay, that passes um, all the way along. So if I calculate, so this is gonna be power loss, okay, and then this is power total, all right? At least this way we compare. Not that they ask this, but so we have, 
uh, sorry, the current was 650. So this is 650 squared times the resistance, all right? So you will see that this is gonna be pretty su substantial. So 650, so we're squaring this and then multiplied by 0 0.875. Okay, so notice it's pretty big. All right, so we'll write it out. Um, we'll keep it to three significant figures, I guess. Okay, so that's gonna be that times 10 to the five. Okay, this would be watts, okay, within here. Now, um, if I take a look, okay, so notice the total power, so voltage times the, so this was kilo, right, volts times 650. So let's do that, um, one, two, three, times 650. All right, so this is the total, which was one point, so let's say five zero times 10 to the, what is this? Um, three, six, seven, eight watts, all right? So that would have been the total. So notice this is a comparison. This is just so that you can see. So that's a total power which is being passed along. And then here is the power actually that's lost. Now it's not lost, it's transferred. And of course, where does most of the transfer go in? It goes into thermal energy, right? So it just generates heat, okay? Resistance will do that. So that's just to answer that second portion. Where do you think most of the energy power goes? Okay, so in terms of energy, I mean, we don't, I mean, you can say thermal power, right? But thermal heat or energy within here, that's where it will actually dissipate. Um, so, you know, you will see that even if you take small wires, if you run them, again, if you keep running them, you'll notice that they'll heat up, right? It's the same thing that happens to most of the electrical items. Um, so quite a bit is transferred to heat. Um, all right, so that is it. Okay, for this example. Okay, so here's the last example for us uh, on this one. So assume that for the given set of transformers, the current, uh, so that's 1000 amps, uh, is that's current one. So notice we have three transformers in here. The voltage is 230, that's on V4. Let's start writing these things down. Okay, so this one is 1000 amps. Um, this on the other side, okay, so this right here is 230 kilovolts, all right, so that's one, here's the other. Uh, if the turn ratio for N1 to N2 is 1 to 5, so 1 to 5, N2 to N3 is 1 to 10, okay, N3 to N4, 1 to 15, all right, then answer the following set of questions. Okay, so first part, find all the missing values of voltages and currents. Okay, all right, so, um, okay, well, let's, let's do that. So in order, if I start, uh, let's say, you know, if I go from, let's do the current first. So if I go from the current, so that means the current on the secondary, uh, so notice it's inversely proportional. So, you know, you can certainly set this up. Okay, so this is for part A. So you would have, you know, N1 over N2 is equal to, so that the, the current's there. So that would have been um, I2 all over I1, right? So I'll just do one of them so that you can see it. And therefore that would be one over five. So this is a, a step up, okay? But that's step up in terms of voltage. This is 1000, and then you want to know your current, okay? So if you isolate for I2, all right? So this is gonna be 1000 goes over divided by five, so that's gonna be 200 amps. So we're stepping up the voltage, but we're gonna be stepping down the current, which is what we want, okay? So within here. All right, so that's the first one. So check, I2. Now, if you go and you wanna now go over on the other side, so this is gonna be exactly the same thing. So you would set it up, but it would be in one to 10, but you're starting with 200. So now it's gonna be 200. So if you do exactly the same thing, except it's N2 to N3, and then 200 divided by 10 is 20. 
So that means I3 okay, is going to be, so 200 divided by 10, that's that ratio, which is gonna be 20 amps. And then I4, right there, so as you're going through there, so that's 15, so that's gonna be 20 divided by 15, which is going to be, I guess, four over three uh, within here. So that's if you're dividing by five, so just simplifying amps, or just simply 1.33333, etc. I don't want it round here yet, so I'll just leave it as it is. So those are all my currents. Now my voltages, um, so now going backwards, because I have the voltage at the end, which is 230 kilo volts. So notice it's 115. So I'm gonna go N3 to N4 is equal to, now this is going to be, um, so it's a proportional, so this is V3 over V4. And since N3 over N4 is one over 15, and then V3 over V4, so V3 we don't know within there, but V4 we do, which is 230 kilovolts. So now again, you can isolate, you're gonna get V3, 230 divided by 15 kilovolts, and we're gonna get our answer. So let's see what that is. So 230 divided by 15. All right, so that's 15.33333 kilovolts. Now we're gonna do the same thing, okay? So V2, all right, so as you're going through in here, um, so let's shift that out. So V2, so that's one to 10, all right? So within here, so this is gonna be, if you do the same setup, so that's gonna be divided by 10, which is just 1.5333 kilovolts. And then V1, which is one to five. So that's gonna be 1.53 divided by five. All right, so let's do this. Answer divided by 10. That's the first one. Answer divided by five. So 0 0.306. Again, I'm just gonna uh, keep it. I'm not rounding anything. Okay, so within here. I'm not rounding because I'm gonna probably have to answer future questions. So if you wanted to round, you can certainly round these to three sig figs as they asked us in the beginning. So that's it, okay, for that. Okay, so part B. Based on our answer, show that the ratio of um, 1 to 750 could replace the set of transformers. Um, all right, so, I'm, so this is, so instead of having all of these three, okay, it's like saying, okay, let's just have one of them, and then the ratio would have been 1 to 750. So it's like a huge step up, right, that, that you would have. Um, so within, and then it says what might prevent us from having just a single transformer? Well, you know, one of the things that can prevent us is, you know, just the number of windings. One to 750 is, you know, an enormous amount of windings, so that might not be um, always practical uh, for us, all right? Okay, so that's one thing, okay, that you can mention. But let's try to see if we can calculate this out. So one to 750, well, uh, so, I mean, there's numerous ways you can do this, you can go, directly, this is for B, so one to 750, all right? So that's like going in, so from all the way, from N1 to N4, all right? So this is like from N1 to N4, so that's just a full step up. But please remember, you know, so N1 over N4 um, is equal to the same thing as if you had V1 over V4. Well, V1 over V4, okay, within here. So, you know, if you input that in, 0 0.306, etc. okay, divided by, and that was 230, okay, and this is all in kilovolts, right? So the kilovolts will um, delete itself, and then we're gonna get our answer. All right, so let's see what that is. Okay, so oh, I already have this on the calculator, so divided by 230. Um, so there you have it. So it's zero point, and I just want to show you. There's a bunch of threes. So if you have this answer, 
now because it says one to 750. So like, how do you show that? Okay, um, as you're kind of going along. So uh, if you want to scale it to 750, all right, um, so that's like, you know, so you want this to this, all right? Um, now what we have done, so th this number, okay, right here, uh, is actually one divided by 750, right? And so if you, because we put V4 at the denominator, so if you like, you know, you can instead start with N4 over N1 is equal to V4 over uh, V1. And you would get exactly the same thing. So that answer, it's like we're t we have to take the reciprocal of this. So let's, you know, see, let's see if this works. Okay, so this is going to be the negative 1. Okay, there you go. So 750. Um, and, or, you know, you can just double check 1 divided by 750. Okay, and you get indeed this. So that would give you that answer. All right, so that proves B. Um, C, what is the power output at the end of the transformer? Well, I mean, the power output at the end is the same as in the beginning. So um, that doesn't, so how you do this again is up to you. Um, you know, if it's 1000 amps and then, you know, we got our answers. Okay, so here it is. So let's do, I'm going to do that over here. This is for part C. So power, it's voltage times current. So this is going to be 230 kilovolts times 1.333, etc. Okay, so we in there. So 230 um, multiplied by 1.333, or you can just times it by 4 over 3. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be 30. All right, I'm gonna just round this one, okay, to three sig figs. Although it's three o, you know, six point six 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 six, etc. This is kilo because of the k, and then this would be watts because voltage times amperage is watts. So there you go. That's what you would have. You can multiply the first two, so the voltage V one, and multiply it by current, uh, the first current, and then you'll see you're gonna get exactly the same thing. And you can do that on any. Um, uh, at any step, okay, over here. You can do this, you can do that, you can do this multiplication or that, and you will get the same thing within there. If the number of turns for N4 is 3,000, then find the number of turns for each primary and secondary, okay? Uh, so within here, so what they're saying, so notice this is 1 to 15, 1 to 10, 1 to 5. So notice N3, you know, N3. So these are, I'm going to make those equal. So 3,000. So that's going to be for the last one. Um, so we had 1 to 15. All right. So this is going to be N3 to N4. All right. So this was 1 to 15. And they're telling us that N4 is equal to 3,000. So this is basically just a ratio, okay? And you're finding this, which is N3, all right? So if you solve that, so it's going to be 3,000 divided by 15. Well, 15 goes into 30 twice. So there's going to be 200 windings for N3. So that's N3 right there. Okay, 200, 3,000. So as you can see, you know, if you wanted to wind it, it's 750. So this particular ratio in part B, you know, you would have noticed that, okay, we, we might run into, you know, too many windings. And then how do we actually design a transformer that might have that, okay, within there. Um, in any case, so now if you move over, so notice N3 is the same thing, N3. So I'll just assume this is 200. And now this is one to 10, right? So I need to find N2. So if you do the same thing, so this is going to be N2 over N3, okay, except this is now 200, put a question mark in here. So that's going to be 1 to 10 right there. So you'll notice that N2 is going to be just 200 divided by 10, which is going to be 20. Okay, so only 20 windings there. And then the last one, so if this is N2, N2, so I'll keep this at 20. Well, this is 5. So it's going to be the same thing, which is going to give us um, now N1 over N2. This is 20. 
right? This is one to five. So you're gonna get 20 divided by five, which is four, all right? So there you go. Those are all your windings. Four, 20, 200, 3,000. That's what we would have there. And that is it, okay? So for this example, and that finishes off uh, this particular you know, quiz or mini test. Thanks for watching, okay? Happy to be glad this foundational physics. Bye, everybody.